So you hear a lot of different things in the media about sperm count, especially like in the West, that and then fertility, that it's been declining in the West. And then you see that there's a story that was reported in The Sun about thousands of men being at risk of having weak sperm, depending on which city they live in. And so, because obviously I, I focus a lot on health and taking care of yourself. And one of the things that Eric Casey said in his readings is that you are what you don't get rid of. And what I found is like the green juices and the green smoothies give your body the natural buffers that it needs to safely neutralize toxins and remove them from the body. Because if your body can't deal with it, it has to park it in the tissues. And as you age, these things build up in your tissues and it's what eventually kills you. And so obviously if people aren't dieting, they're not exercising. I, I mean, if you just look at video from 30, 40, 50 years ago, people are a lot thinner than they are today. I mean, I remember growing up, somebody that was overweight or fat, there was a handful of them in school. But nowadays, I mean, like the latest stats I've seen is like, 74% of Americans are either overweight or they're obese. And when you think about all the processed foods and the garbage that people eat and put it in their bodies, full of sugar, full of carbs, it's like the mass humans. And you know, what's interesting is I was saw a documentary a couple of years ago and it was on Saudi Arabia and all the progress that they've made there. And what's interesting is American fast food has restaurants all over Saudi Arabia. And so now the Saudis are eating American fast food and they're getting supersized as well. The men, the women, the kids, everybody is getting overweight because of eating this food. And so it would make sense if people are eating poor quality food and lots of sugars, lots of carbohydrates, lots of things that just aren't healthy and they're not getting proper exercise and they're not getting the alkaline minerals and nutrients to neutralize these toxins in the body that it's going to affect every system in your body and you're going to be less healthy. And in men, it's going to produce lower quality sperm. So Esty, tell us about the stats. What you got? As reported in the sun, Researchers in China discovered that men who live in heavily polluted areas may experience poor sperm motility. It's not the first time a link between toxic air and men's swimmers has been made. Prior research has shown that sperm counts for men living in North America. The baby batter has gone bad. <laughs> North America, Australia, and Europe have been declining since the 1970s. Shooting more blanks. While there could be a number of reasons why, scientists theorize air pollution is a key component. The yogurt is funky. Um, there's a link that I will click and go over some key points. The title of this article says, Association of Exposure to Particulate Matter Air Pollution with Semen Quality Among Men in China. These are the key points. What's interesting about China is they don't have all the regulations that we have over here for health and pollution. And so, I mean, it's well known, like the smog in Beijing and some of these other places, is, it's literally toxic. And so they're constantly dumping things into their environment because they're making the stuff that most of the world consumes and it would make sense that if they're just dumping this stuff into the, the ground and in their water supply and it's in their air, that it's going to have a negative effect on their health. Mm -hmm. So for those who are watching, um, this article says key points, the question, findings, meaning, abstract, importance, objective. And you can take a look at that or you can like read it through to see. So there were basically a study of 33,876 Chinese men. Yep. And the decreased total and progressive sperm motility and increased risk of asinzoospermia. I don't know what that word is. With associated with exposure to particulate matter less than 2.5 
UM and 10 UM, I think that's parts per million maybe. So these findings suggest that control measures to reduce exposure to ambient particulate matter may help increase male fertility and reduce the risk of asthenozoospermia. I don't know who, who dreams up these words, but it's a fancy way of saying that if you're healthier, if you eat better quality foods and you're not taking in toxins from your environment, your sperm will be better and your babies will be healthier. I would imagine it's going to affect the eggs in the woman's body and her ability to carry as well. Because if you think about it, typically, because um, I know like in my family, one of my aunts had, they had a fourth kid and it's my, my cousin is re mentally retarded and she was older and she was overweight when they weren't expecting to have a fourth child, but obviously my uncle slipped one past the goalie. So they got a, a fourth child, but she, you know, she was much older than she was when she had her, my, my other three cousins. So in men and women, both it's the older you get, the typically the harder it is, especially for women to get pregnant and to carry that pregnancy all the way through and the baby be healthy. You just get a higher incidence of birth defects and, and problems happening. So it would make sense. Mm -hmm. Researchers honed in on particulate matter, one component of pollution that is made up of tiny particles produced mostly by traffic. PM is very small in size, and once inhaled, the toxins may enter the bloodstream and be transported around the body, lodging in the heart, brain, and other organs. The study found during the entire period of sperm development, over 90 days exposure to higher levels of PM degraded sperm motility. Patients exposed to particulate matters smaller than 2.5 micrometers had on average a 3.6% decrease in motility when compared to the average man in China. I believe this was a quote from one of the researchers. To what extent this is clinically meaningful, whether it will reduce the ability of men in high pollution areas to become fathers is not clear. And we should remember that the link between sperm quality and fertility is a weak one. I got another example. This one's anecdotal. And this was from a, a guy I used I used to work with years ago, and nice guy, but the dude was a chain smoker, and he was just he constantly smoked. And like when you would walk into his office, it literally smelled like an ashtray. And his wife smoked like a chimney as well. And this this guy he was in his thirties, but his hair was all gray, and he looked old. He looked like he was 15, 20 years older. And so did, so did his wife, who I think she was like early 30s, but she looked like she was about 45. Neither one of them exercised. They were, you know, they were both out of shape. He was a little, little overweight and they had their first baby. And the baby had all kinds of health problems, had all kinds of complications. The baby had to have an operation. It's like intestines were kind of like folded up, like into itself. And uh, it's like, you know, his baby had all kinds of health problems and both their parents were incredibly unhealthy. Even their house just because they both were chain smokers. They constantly smoked. Their diet was terrible. Their skin was terrible. Their teeth were all yellow. And it's like you put that much toxicity in your body. It's going to affect you and it's going to affect your the kids you have. 